Key thing behind this is 7.3 part 2, partial fraction decomposition. You're taking a big rational expression. A rational expression just means it's a fraction that has letters in it. And it's a big mess, and we're just breaking it apart. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do it. The process is actually quite simple. I'll show you how you can check to make sure you're doing it correctly, and then we'll be good to go. So is everybody with me? Everybody got their notes open? We're good to go. Deanna, you ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. This is explaining everything I'm about to do. This is in math talk, so I know it doesn't mean a lot to you guys, so I'm going to explain it to you in real people layman's terms. All right, this is what we're going to do. Again, this doesn't really mean much. I understand that, so we're just going to do some problems. All right, I have this first problem. It says find the partial fraction decomposition. The first thing you do for every single one of these problems is we factor the denominator. Is this denominator already factored? Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to solve the denominator real quick. Underneath this, I'm just going to write x equals 3 and x equals negative 5. Okay? You're going to need that later. But after you factor, I would go ahead and just solve the denominator. How many pieces <clears throat> did we break, is this denominator broken into? How many different terms? How many binomials? We'll put it that way. Two, right? Okay, so you have the first piece, we're going to put x minus 3, plus the second piece, we're going to put x plus 5. And for every different piece that we break it into, we're going to use letters. So I'm going to use a capital A here, capital B here. If I had three pieces, my letters would be A, B, and what? C. There you go. C. Now, C. perfect. Now, this is what WebAssign is asking you to do for the last four questions or so. I took one of them off, so just make sure you refresh when you open it. That's it. That's not what we're asking you to do on the, on the quiz. I'm going to ask you to actually solve it. But that's what WebAssign is asking you to do when they ask you to, to do the partial decomposition. They just want you to set it up. So to go ahead and solve, we're now going to say, okay, we're going to look at each piece individually. Comparing it to the original question of 6x plus 14 over x minus 3x plus 5. My first fraction, A, it has the x minus 3. What is it missing from that denominator? The x plus 5. So I'm going to multiply the top here by x plus 5. And this is the process. This is what we do. This is how you take that fraction and you break it down. So the second fraction has the x plus 5. What's it missing? Uh, x minus 3. X minus 3. Okay. Perfect. So now... Would you agree with me? We all have the same denominator. We're good to go. I'm going to rewrite this as just the numerator. 6x plus 14 equals a times x plus 5 plus b times x minus 3. So what we did was we factored the denominator and solved it real quick. And then we just broke apart our pieces. I have the first piece and the second piece. And then you just multiply the numerators by what the denominators are missing. And then I set the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. Everybody okay? So this is where our x equals 3 and x equals negative 5 comes in. We're going to solve this equation in blue twice. I'm going to say over here, let x equals 3. So I'm going to plug in 3. I have 6 times 3 plus 14 equals a times... 3 plus 5 plus b times 3 minus 3. All I did was just take that blue equation and I just substituted in the 3. Everybody with me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's simplify then. Yes. Okay, perfect. What is 6 times 3? 18. And then 18 plus 14 is how much? 32. Okay. Equals... Well, simplify here. What's 3 plus 5? 8. So I have 8a plus, what's 3 minus 3? Times b? 0. 0. So that cancels out. Yes, hang on one second. So now I, I can solve this equation, right? 8a equals what? 32. So a equals? Oh, I heard 8a. Yeah, that's what I said. So you're going to solve that equation. You're fine. So I have a equals 4. Yes? Okay, hang on one sec. Hang on, hang on. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're going to do the exact same thing, but... Again, okay, great, hold on.
Thank you, sweetheart. So now I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to solve, but this time I'm going to let x equal what? Negative 5. Good. So I'm going to plug in 6 times negative 5 plus 14 equals a times negative 5 plus 5 plus b times negative 5 minus 3. Everybody with me? Okay, so let's simplify. What is <clears throat> 6 times negative 5? Okay, so negative 30 plus 14 gives me what? Negative 16. Negative 16, okay, equals, well, what's negative 5 plus 5? Zero. Times A. Also zero. Okay, so that will cross out. So then I have, what's negative 5 times plus negative 3? Or negative 5 minus 3? Negative 8. So I have negative 8B. So when I solve this, what does B equal? 2. B equals 2. Okay. Everybody all right with that? Mm -hmm. So now we go back up here. To our original, we had this, a over x minus 3, e plus b over x plus 5. And we just solved what a and b are. So your answer would be 4 over x minus 3 plus 2 over what? x plus 5. That's your partial fraction decomposition. Now some of you are going to say, well, what, huh? How do I check that? Can I check that? No, you can't check that. Yes, you can, because if I wanted to go back to the original, right, I have x minus 3 in the bottom, so I'd have to multiply this numerator by x plus 5, right? Here I have x plus 5, I'd have to multiply this by x minus 3. Well, what's 4 times x? 4x. Four four x. What's 4 times 5? Oh, 20. 20. What's 2 times x? 2x. And then what's 2 times negative 3? Minus 6, right? Well, 4 plus 2 gives me 6x, and 20 minus 6 gives me positive 14, which is exactly what we started off with at the beginning. You see that? Everybody see that? Yes. It's not incredibly difficult. It just is a little tedious. But once you do a few of these in a row, it's like, oh, this isn't bad. This is the hardest that I'm going to give you on your quiz. <clears throat> just, a, just where it's a quadratic. Nothing more than that. So let's look at the next one. All right. X times X is X squared. It's just already factored for you. It's a quadratic. So now on the bottom here, guys, look. Is the numerator, is the denominator already factored for us? Okay, look. <clears throat> this is already factored for us, yes? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to solve real quick. I'm going to say x equals 2 and x equals 5. We're going to put that in our pocket for a minute. So now I have two little pieces in my denominator, so I'm going to split into two pieces. My first piece, I'm going to write x minus 2. My second piece, x minus 5. Somebody C period said, can I put x minus 5 first, then x minus 2? Yes, you get the same thing. I'm going to put an a here and a b here. So now my next step is to see what do what one fraction has that the other one doesn't and vice versa so this first a has x minus 2 it's missing x minus 5 in the second equation b has x minus 5 it's missing what x minus 2 so I'm gonna rewrite my problem to where it says x minus 14 equals a times x minus 5 plus b, good, times x minus 2. Now I'm going to solve this two times. And what two values am I going to use? Uh, 2 and 5. Perfect. So yeah. over here I'm going to say let x equal 2. So I have 2 minus 14 equals a times 2 minus 5 plus b times 2 minus 2. And as we simplify, guys, what's 2 minus 14? Negative 12. Perfect. What's 2 minus 5? 
Negative 3. So I have negative 3a. And then what happens with 2 minus 2 times b? It cancels. It cancels out. Cancels. So I get that a equals how much? 4. Perfect. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Over here I'm going to say let x equal 5, which we solved at the beginning. So I have 5 minus 14 equals a times 5 minus 5 plus b times 5 minus 2. When we simplify, 5 minus 14 is negative 9. What's 5 minus 5 times yeah, a? Zero. It's 0. It cancels out. And then I have equals 5 minus 2 is 3, so 3b. Three so b equals? Negative 3. Negative 3. Perfect. So when I go to write my answer, I have 4 over x minus 2, we're just replacing from our original up here, plus negative 3 over x minus 5. Somebody asked me, C period, how do you, is it always plus in the middle? You always put a plus in the middle because if the second term is negative, it'll work itself out. Another way I could write this would be 4 over x minus 2 minus 3 over x minus 5. But if you have plus a negative, it doesn't matter. So there's your answer. And if you wanted to check it, you absolutely could. I would multiply this by x minus 5 and over here by x minus 2. So 4 times x would give me 4x. 4 times negative 5 is minus 20. Plus negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times negative 2 is plus 6. So when you combine like terms, 4x minus 3x is x. And then 20, negative 20 and 6 is plus 14, which is what we started off with right here. Everybody see that? Okay, so I'm just showing you. I'm not going to check them anymore. I'm just showing you how you can. But the answer in purple is your answer. 4 over x minus 2. You can either say plus negative 3 over x minus 5, or you can say 4 over x minus 2 minus 3 over x minus 5. Question? Oh, it's minus 14. Excuse me? It's minus 14. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Here, this is minus negative 20. You're right. Thank you. These three are the types that you're going to have on your web assign tonight. And this is legitimately all you have to do on the web assign. That's why I wanted to show you those first two. And then we'll come back to these. It says to write the form of partial fraction decomposition, but not to solve it. This is what they want you to do on web assign. So the first thing you would do is do what to the bottom? Factor it. So what are my two factors going to be? What times what gives me a positive 9 when I multiply, but a 10 when I add? 9 and 1. Yep, so plus 9 plus 1. So how many different pieces am I breaking this one up into? Two. One denominator is x plus 9. One is x plus 1. So I have an A and a B. That's all they're asking you to do on your web assignment tonight. It's just an extra step of just like, like of um, um, factoring the yep. the, the um, yeah because it wasn't factored for you. So if you were going to go ahead and solve this, like on tonight's ones, as, as long as it's a quadratic, I would tell you to go ahead and solve it, and then tomorrow we can go over it because you have a quiz on Wednesday. So any questions you have from last night or from tonight's homework, I'll answer tomorrow in class. Now, this is a little different, and I would never, ever, ever ask you guys to solve one of these. So don't ask me if this is going to be on the quiz. It's not going to be. The highest I told you would be a quadratic. This is not a quadratic. This is a cubic. Would you agree with me that you would split this up into x plus 1, x plus 1, and x plus 1, right? So how many pieces? Three. 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 So I'm going to have three pieces. And the way that you write the three pieces when they're all the same, I know that they're all the same because it's the same quantity squared. Okay? You write your x plus 1 first. The second x plus 1 is squared. And the last one is to the third power. It's just the way that partial fraction decomposition works out when you have to go back and check it. So this would be a... B, and C. I'm never going to ask you to do anything other than that with something like this. So if it was to the fourth power, what would your four fractions look like? Uh, X B. 
X plus um, one to the first power. The second fraction would be plus two to the X plus one to the second power. The third fraction would be X plus, X plus one to the one third to the power. power. And then the fourth and denominator would be one. X plus one to the fourth. But you are not going to have to solve that. But on, tonight on a web, you have a web assigned question that looks like that. I just wanted to show you. That only happens when you get bigger than a quadratic, and we don't deal with those. So on this one, that did not, the numerator looks gross, but don't even worry about it. When all they're asking you to do is just set it up, would you guys agree with me? This is the same as x minus 1 and then x minus 2 times x minus 2. Yeah. So you have three pieces of a denominator. You have x minus 1. And then what do my next two denominators look like? Uh, x minus 2. S plus two and then S2 squared. Perfect. Square. Because when you have quantity squared here, however many you have, like if it's to the third power, then the first one you write is to the first power, the second one you write is to the second power, the third one you write is to the third power. If it's the exact same. If it's different, then you just write it each one time. <clears throat> just the way that the, the decomposition works out. I'm not going to have you guys do anything more than that. Okay, again, this will not be on your quiz, this one, but I just want to show you how this is a little different. <clears throat> Partial composition. What do you do first to the denominator? Factor it. You factor it. Would you guys agree with me that when I factor this, it would become x times x plus 2, x minus 2? Yeah. Because when you take out the x, you're left with x squared minus 4. Now, are any of those pieces the same? No, they're all different. So we're going to write out three fractions. And we're going to use the three different denominators. So the first denominator I'm going to use is x. The second one, x plus 2. And the third one, x minus 2. Now we do the exact same thing we did in the first few examples, guys. This is just going to be a little longer problem. But it's the same exact thing. I look at that first fraction. It has the x. What is it missing from the other denominator? <clears throat> Uh, x minus 2 squared? No. It, that, those are different. One's plus, one's minus. So it's x plus 2, x minus 2. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look at B. B has the x plus 2. What is it missing? The x and the x minus 2. The x and the x minus 2. And then C has the x minus 2. It's missing x and x plus 2. So now we're going to do like we did before. We're going to write out our full equation. x squared plus 12x plus 12 equals. We'll foil. What's x minus 2x plus 2? Uh, x squared minus 4? Yeah. So then I have plus b times. What is this in red when I foil it or when I distribute? Uh, x squared minus X. Good. Plus C. What is this one when I distribute? X squared, X squared plus 2X. Perfect. Now when we solve our denominator, you guys agree I'm going to plug in these three numbers? Mm -hmm. Right? We just solved. So now we're going to solve that blue equation using all three of those numbers. I'm going to start over here. I'm going to say 0 squared plus 12 times 0 plus 12 equals a times 0 squared minus 4 plus b times 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus c times 0 squared plus 2 times 0. So, simplify. What's 0 squared? 0. Plus 12 zero. times zero. 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 0. 0. So I have 12 equals. What's 0 squared? 0. Minus 4. Negative 4. Okay, so negative 4a. And then what happens with 0 squared minus 2 times 0? Cancel. Don't Cancels. the rest of the variables yep. cancel out. Yep. 0 squared zero. plus, so this is 0. So a equals how much? Negative 3. Perfect. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to plug in negative 2. So I have negative 2 squared 
plus 12 times negative 2 plus 12 equals a times negative 2 squared minus 4 plus b times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus c times negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2, right? Okay, so negative 2 squared is 4 minus 24 plus 12. What's 4 minus 24? Negative 20. Plus 12. Mm, negative 8. Negative 8 equals, okay? What's negative 2 squared minus 4? Zero. Negative no, negative two squared is four, oh, and four minus four is right. zero. All right, so negative two squared here is four, plus four is what? Eight. So I have eight B. And then over here, I have four minus four, which is? Zero. So B equals what? Negative one. Yep. Now we're gonna do the same thing, guys. We're gonna plug in what? Uh, positive 2 this time. Yep. So 2 squared plus 12 times 2 plus 12 equals a times 2 squared minus 4 plus b times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus c times 2 squared plus 2 times 2, right? 2 squared is 4. 12 times 2 is 24. What's 4 plus 24 plus 12? Uh, 40. Mm -hmm. What's 2 squared? 4. Minus 4 is 0. That cancels. 0. 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 is 0. That cancels. 2 squared is 4. Plus 4 is what? 8. So you're left with 8C. And now we divide by 8 and I get C equals five. Now we just take those numbers and we plug them in. So my answer would be A was negative three, so negative three over X plus B was negative one, so negative one over X plus two, plus C is five over X minus two. Am I going to give you a problem this long? No. This is a quiz. We're just doing basic partial decomposition. We're not going to do anything bigger than a quadratic. This is a cubic. But I just wanted to show you the process. It takes a little longer, but it's not anything you guys can't handle. One more, and then we're done. You should still be able to get your homework done before you leave. This is like something you would have on your quiz. <clears throat> Find the partial decomposition. All right, what do I do first? Factor the bottom. Factor the bottom. So tell me the factors, guys, of negative 40 that add to give me a negative 3, but multiply to give me a negative 40. Negative 8, positive 5. X minus 8, X plus 5. I agree. So when I solve that, later on, I'm going to use X equals 8. I'm going to use X equals negative 5. So write your two pieces. I have A and then X minus 8. Again, you can put X plus 5 first if you want. Then I have B and I have X, minus, or X plus 5. Now figure out what each piece is missing. I have the x minus eight, that means my a needs x plus five. B has the x plus five, it needs the x minus eight. <clears throat> and now we go to solve. I have x plus three equals a times x plus five plus b times x minus eight. Everybody with me? Yep. So I'm going to say let x equal 8. And I'm going to say let x equal negative 5. So I have 8 plus 3 equals a times 8 plus 5 plus b times 8 minus 8. <clears throat> what do you guys notice happens every time you plug in? What happens to one of the terms? Yeah, they cancel. If they don't, then you missed a sign, so be careful. But 8 plus 3 is 11. 
and then 8 and 5 is 13, and then 8 and 8 cancel out. So you have A equals how much? 11 over 13. Yep, 11 over 13. You got a fraction. No big deal. Super easy to deal with, I promise. So on this side, I'm going to plug in negative 5. So I have negative 5 plus 3 equals A times negative 5 plus 5 plus B times negative 5 minus 8. Negative 5 and 3 is negative 2. What happens with negative 5 and positive 5? Yeah, so Perfect. Zero. Good. So then I have negative 13B, right? Mm -hmm. So B equals? 2 over 13. 2 over 13. Yeah. Perfect. So my original up here, when I split it up, I had A over X minus 8 plus B over X plus 5, right? So now we're just going to put A here and B there. So I have 11 over 13 over X minus 8 plus 2 over 13 over X plus 5. One more step so you write it as complete as possible. This isn't a keep change flip. Don't make this harder than you guys need to. Where can I also write that 13? Well, it's in the numerator. Where can I also write it? It's me. Oh, wait, never mind. I can write this like this. So how can I write the second fraction? Over 13x plus 5. Yep. 13. Yep, you're not trying to simplify. You're not trying to do anything crazy like that. You're just trying to get your fraction out of the numerator. So if you end up with a fraction, whatever the denominator is in the fraction that you have, just stick it in front of the term in the bottom. And then if you guys wanted to check it, what would you multiply 11 by to check it? What would you multiply the 11 by? It already has the 13. What is it missing? If I was going to check this, I'd multiply the numerator here by x plus 5. I'd multiply here by x minus 8. Now, 11 times x is 11x. 11 times 5 is 55, right? Yes? Yes. I'm going to confuse you guys even more if I do this, but this is the process. 2x and then 2 times 8, and that minus 16. What's 11 plus 2x? 13x. What's 55 minus 16? 55 minus 16. Somebody do 55 minus 16 right now. 39. Now you guys are going to say, wait, that's not the same thing. X plus 3 is not the same as 13X plus 39. Is there a GCF in 13X plus 39? Yeah. If I take out a 13, am I left with X plus 3? Yeah. Do you see this right here? Mm -hmm. That's the GCF right there. Because when you break apart, right, you're doing the opposite. So here, we're dividing by 13. Here, we're multiplying by it. So you can always, always, always check your final answer to make sure that you guys are right.